So this summer, I was doing some work on our house, and as I was doing that work, I was listening to some podcasts. In one of them, I heard a guest respond with a book that he had read or had been reading called Think and Grow Rich. The title of the book just kind of stood out to me. The next day, I was continuing my work, and this time I was listening to John Acuff's podcast, and he had a guest on the show. I don't recall who the guest was, but John asked him, what are your top, I don't remember if it was three or five favorite books. And I'm pretty sure the first book this guy mentioned was again, Think and Grow Rich. So at this point, I was very intrigued. I went to Audible and I purchased the book. It sat in my library on Audible for a while as I was finishing up some other books. And then not too long ago, I got to reading this or listening to this book. And I gotta say, I've really enjoyed this book so far, and I've actually come to find out how popular the book actually is. It was written by a guy named Napoleon Hill back in 1937. And if you go and research this guy, which of course I did, you kind of find he had a little bit of a sketchy background. He had a number of businesses that failed. It's hard to tell if he had success in business. But regardless, many people have read this book and have applied the principles and have had had great success. So let's just go ahead and state the obvious. It's a cringe-worthy title, especially if you are a Christian. I know because I felt the same way. I mean, the idea of growing rich just doesn't seem to coincide well with the Christian worldview. And we're all aware of Jesus' critique of the wealthy. Typically, they were flaunting their wealth, they weren't generous with it, and they were hoarding their wealth. But here's what I found. So the book Think and Grow Rich, yes, it does have a heavy focus on monetary wealth, but not monetary wealth alone. The principles can be applied in many aspects of our lives, including relationships, our work ethic, and of course spirituality, which really should be integrated into all these things anyway. So I don't want to spend a lot of time justifying the book because of its title, but I do feel the need to say it's definitely worth checking out. Now, so far to date, I'm not a millionaire, but the thing is, if you live in America, no matter what your financial status, compared to the rest of the world, you're probably considered wealthy. We don't have a whole lot to complain about here in America, even in the really bad economy that we're currently experiencing. So why give this book a chance? The truth is, we can't deny that we think about and maybe we worry about money. As a believer, I know that God is my provider, but I also know that I have a responsibility in terms of my family's financial well-being. And kind of in a similar way, I've mentioned many times before that I run a nonprofit. At our ministry, God has proven himself faithful over and over again, and that's coming from a reformed PCA guy. But nevertheless, even though God is our provider, I still have a responsibility to fundraise and ask our donors to fund our mission. So God, in his sovereignty, somehow uses his provision alongside our work and responsibility to provide for our needs. And so I believe it's the same in our personal and family life as well. We're not supposed to just sit on the couch all day and wait for God to provide. No, we have a responsibility to do the work to provide for our families, knowing that that provision comes ultimately from God alone. And so if we have a God-glorifying heart when looking at this book, I mean, I believe it can be really beneficial to us. Now, I'm telling you this because I've decided to share with you what I have been and will continue to be learning through this book, but coming from a Christian worldview. If you search Think and Grow Rich on YouTube, you will find tons of videos about the book, some giving some great summaries, but I haven't found any that look at it through a Christian lens. And that's what I wanna do because I wanna make sure both you and me are glorifying God in this pursuit. So so clearly this is just an intro, but over the coming weeks and months, I will be adding to this playlist. Maybe when you're viewing this, the playlist is completed, and that's great. You can just go straight through it. But if it's not completed, know that I'll be adding to it on a regular basis. I'm still going to be doing my regular videos, but every few weeks I'll add to this playlist. So what should you do right now? I would say, obviously, go get the book. You can listen to the book on Audible. In fact, there is a link in the description so you can actually download and have the book for free for life. Or you can get a physical copy and start reading the book despite what you might think of the title. And of course, you should subscribe to the channel and even consider turning on notifications so you don't miss a part of this series as it comes out. Not long ago, I mentioned in a video, and I hate to mention it again, but I'm in my 50s. I know I look a lot younger, but admittedly, I'm late to all of this. And that, for me, is all the motivation I need to start moving in this process. If you are younger, probably like between 18 and mid-30s, man, there are some things that I wish I had known when I was that age. Had I known these things, I'm sure I would have saved myself a whole lot of stress. So please don't miss out. Check out this video next so that you don't make the same mistakes.